That night I slept again. Very content, I dreamed, but I can't remember what those dreams were about. I was at peace. The trails fill me with a peaceful healing that I find nowhere else. On the third day, we woke again. Part of me wanted to linger here. Another part wanted to push on towards the next big challenge. Good morning. Beginning day three, leaving Longsome Lake. Pretty, pretty place. Fish are jumping. About 1.2 to the top of Jackass Pass. And then uh, from there, we'll just descend down to uh, Big Sandy Lake. And then it's pretty, pretty flat all the way back to the trailhead. So I think Big Sandy's about three, three and a half miles from here. So depending on what we want to do, we may stop there, we may go on couple more miles, camp there, they go all the way in to the trailhead. We really don't know yet, but uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But wherever we go, I'll let you know. So let's go get on the trail. Jackass Pass is smaller than Texas Pass. It's a thousand feet shorter at only 10,500 feet. What it lacks in height, Jackass Pass makes up in sheer ruggedness. It's hard. Down there is where we camped last night. And we circumvented the lake. We grind our way to the top. Resting often, I try to catch my breath. The thin air makes this a hard exercise. Starting at Jackass Pass. And we're ascending right up to there. And there's Texas Pass. See it on the camera, but there's somebody just going through there right now. Eventually, we see the wooden sign at the top of the pass. The sign isn't as weathered as its counterpart on Texas Pass. It's a great place for some photos and to realize the pass is aptly named. Because who else would climb up here? Going down, I tried to follow the rock carns marking the trail through here. Well, I must have G'd when I should have hawed, cause suddenly the trail ended at the beginning of a huge pile of large granite boulders. So we've come to this rock scramble. We gotta go across over there to hit the trail again. But, uh, just go slow, get over there to it. I'll show you these rock carns, sort of, they're Rocky Mountain type uh, answers to the blazes on the AT. There you go. There's one, there's another one out there. Rick and I looked for a sign of some path and I didn't see anything. Soon another hiker, a much younger hiker, came along and walked across the boulders at a level 
just below our perch. I scrambled down to where he had been, and there were carns. I hadn't seen them before, and the path was there, but it was scary. This was by far the hardest part of the trail. It was on this section that I learned something about myself. I had lost a lot of confidence when I fell in similar boulders in Pennsylvania. Hiking the Pennsylvania section of the Appalachian Trail with Rick, I fell at a place called the Knife's Edge. My face was cut badly, both eyes were blackened, but I quickly healed physically. Now I realize that the greater injury was to my confidence in my balance. In Pennsylvania, I had fallen a few feet. Here, I could have fallen more than 50 feet. So slowly, I picked a path from boulder to boulder, grasping rocks protruding from the mountain face, squeezing around tight corners to connect with another series of boulders. This went on for about a quarter of a mile. We kept boulder hopping all the way down to Big Sandy Lake. Big Sandy Lake. Oh, there you are. Hello. How are you? Yeah. It's good to see you out here. Yes. Right there. <laughs> well, there you are. You gonna come and see us? Yeah. Wish I had something for you. Your friendly thing. We got to Big Sandy Lake. Now the last time, Rick and I had pitched our tents along the eastern shore of the lake. No one else was in sight. This time, that spot looked like a tent city. We guess that we met over a hundred hikers during this trip. Last time, we had met six. This was a very different experience. I suggested that we hike on past Big Sandy to a less popular Diamond Lake a couple of miles further down the trail. And as we were going, the deep voice of thunder rumbled again. I saw a promising spot just off the trail behind the tree line. We found two flat spots and used it as a stealth tent site. Just as we pitched our tents, the rains came and we were blessed once again. It was our final night on our return visit.